Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this week's webinar. We are going to be covering the event portal and some of the registration options that are available to you. Looks like we have a little small attendance today, but thank you for joining us. So let's jump right into this. So what I did is I created a lead for us to use for this webinar. The reason I did a lead is because I wanted to show you uh, the registration options that are available to you even in the basic version or the club version of tournament management. So, so all I did is set up a basic lead. Um, I put some, show you here, just put 20 people, 20 random golfers in there as well as myself. Uh, this way I can show you kind of the emails and how they work and what they look like when they come through. Under calendar, let me just show you this. So I just set up a bunch of rounds. Um, as you can see here, sign up is open. I mean, and right now they all say no. If I go to round two, for example, uh, round one, I already did pairings and leaderboard. This way I can show you how this all looks on the event portal when we get there. All right, so if we go to round two, uh, we can go to start planning. Let everything go through. All right, this is just the round dashboard kind of showing you a little checklist to go through. But we'll just click back here on round two. All right. Now we'll see here that we now have these options at the top for open free signups and this setup round invoice. This isn't something that you'll really use. This is more for, again, the premium version where you can actually take payments through this. But if we go ahead and go to open free signups, so now signups for round two are open and available for people to sign up. There are a couple different ways that people can do this. Uh, the first one is we can actually send invitations. I'll let it load here. So it's going to send a default message that let me pull it up. All right. So it'll look like this. So this is one that I already sent to myself just uh, so that way I can show you what it looks like. Let's expand this here. All right. So as you can see here, um, this this header or this banner up here, we can change. I haven't set up a banner for the lead. That's why it goes with the default. And it kind of shows you the lead name, what round we're talking about, and it's asking us, are we playing or not playing? So if a user was to follow one of these links, it would then change their sign up in the process. As you can see here, this is the message that you can add. So if we go back to here, if we were right here in this text box, that is what would show up right here. All, as you can see, all I typed up was sign up now, but you can type anything you want. There's uh, plenty of room there to, to type. So, and then the plain or not plain, what that will do is under rounds, and we go to round roster. So right now we have players not attending as all of us because we officially haven't had anyone register. So if I were to go send myself an invite, uh, just type something in here, invite golfers, and send it to myself and hit go. All right. Oh, oops. That just changed me to attending. That's not what I want. There we go. All right. So now let's get my email. All right. So now I got the email for round two. I'm going to click on here to say that I am playing. This takes me to the event portal, which we're going to get to in just a minute. But it now officially has you record for registering for round two play. You're now playing in this round. So if I minimize that, 
As you can see, options for people when they register is to sign up other desks, send a message to the manager. So if I were to send a message to the manager, that would come to anyone that's labeled as a customer manager for the lead. And we can also sign up a desk here if we wanted to. Now this is an option that you can turn on and off. All right, so now if I go to round and roster, it will officially show me in confirmed players because I went on and selected that I was going to be playing in this round. <clears throat> the other way that people can register, so let me go back here, is, is you can actually set up them to register through here. And under T-Sheets, but we'll get, to, we'll get to all this in a second. Uh, but that's the e easiest way to have people register is just send them an email asking them if they want to play or not, and then they can select one way or the other. And, and then when you want to be done having signups available, we hit close signups here. And then we can officially confirm who's playing, make sure the rounds, division flights, and teams are correct, and go ahead with our pairings, tournaments, scorecards, and the rest. <coughs> so even though people uh, click in whether or not they're playing or not, you always have the ability to finalize the roster by selecting people here and moving them around. So don't think that just because they clicked on playing that they have to be playing. All right. So next, let's go. And this system will is very similar to the general send email system. So the send email system that we've kind of talked about a little bit before, these are more for general emails, but um, the registration kind of works through the same system. So the emails look very similar. All right. Now what we are going to do is talk about our apps. So under the apps tab, which we haven't really done much in, uh, we have this lead portal. Um, so any lead or event you create in tournament management, a portal with a unique website address is created automatically. The system does it uh, just as a generality. So it's something that you can use or not. It is completely up to you. <clears throat> so uh, you have a couple options down here uh, to register golfers to use the lead portal. So what we can do here is we can click here and automatically just send an invite so saying, to letting people know, hey, here's the here's the lead information, and this is what it looks like. So uh, let's download the pictures. All right. So then, you know, here's the here's the web or hmm. um, so what this is saying is allowing you to access the portal by clicking here. So if I had received this email for a lead I wanted to be in, I click here and I immediately get taken to the portal. And then I have the ability to view like T sheets. So I can actually see what's coming up for round one, let's say. And there we go. All right, let's minimize that. Now, one thing, I just want to activate some of these registrations real quick for these other rounds. That way I can show you what it looks like on the website. So all I'm doing is just opening the signups for round three. Okay. Let's do round two also. All right. So sorry about that, but back to the apps. The This is probably the easiest way is to send emails with this link for everybody to go to. The other option is to send the lead GGID to golfers. What that looks like is this option here. So what it'll come up with is just this, this code. Uh, this GGID code, for the most part, is um, really used in the premium version with the app where people can go on to their phone and view stores and everything. But that's not uh, we don't have that available in the club version. So what this GGID number is used for instead is if we go to Golf Genius, 
and let me sign out here all right so now if I am a normal person playing in this lead and I want to view the if I want to view the event portal and I am not I don't have this I don't have the portal address what I can use is this ggid if I copy that I can sign in and rather than entering in my username and password I just click on ggid and enter the number and then hit sign in and it acts as a sign in for everyone to go right to the event portal and as you can see here this modified a little bit because I opened up these registrations for the round two and three so um, what this can do is actually allow me to go down here and select myself and hit next and now I'm officially signed up for the 21st it's showing me what I'm signed up for and let's say the 28th I want to sign up also hit OK and boom so this is registration for uh, the club version of tournament management and this is specifically for leads which is what it's really designed for but you can do it for multi-round uh, events also but and this is what it'll look like and if I go through and open up the registration for the rest of those these same options will come up for everybody you just have to make sure that people select the right person when they do this all right, so that's the GGID number. Now let's just go to the portal here. All right, so technically now we are in the portal as the manager. Now it will it looks the same as if you were to sign up normally, but I just wanted to, if you were to log in normally, it's going to look the same. But if you're the manager, you obviously have more options. So most everything in here can be customized. Um, this, for example, you can actually rewrite this, which we'll get to. Uh, the banner can be changed. I just don't have one in there right now. The background I had already set, which you can see. So if we go to our options, and as the uh, options over here, you'll see this is how you get back to the manager site. We click here, it says, back to our lead dashboard and we can just go to apps and back to our portal all right go to my account and my account shows individual user for the most part you won't need that but I just wanted you guys to see it then you also have the ability to go right to the TV display or view the member portal meaning you can view it exactly how they would see it because obviously as a manager you see some stuff that they don't all right so if we go to home and so each of these drop down boxes have their own options with the different pages available in them so for home right now we have welcome players and golfer profile these locked nets to it what they mean is that someone actually has to log in with the ggid number to view these pages they aren't viewable to the public page so if but we always have the ability to edit them and turn them into a public page uh, but let's start with general portal settings so I don't get ahead of myself so when you first open up your portal your event portal for the first time it takes you to this general settings where you can set the general stuff we have our color scheme we can change to red orange orange is kind of like the default but let's leave it at blue uh, background images we can have no background we can have our current and we can even pick a different one if we have multiple in here or upload one right now uh, the opacity what that allows us is to change this message so view the background better I'm just going to leave this at 100% so that way we don't have to worry about that. The flash message is this right here. The scrolling message uh, is something that you can just set or change. If, um, let's say, at the lead had started today and we knew there was a frost delay, we could type in frost delay 
till 12 p.m. And then if we save the settings, they would then update our message. So that way, hopefully people would see this and know, oh, I have a frost delay, so I'm going to be delayed. One of those. Just a neat little thing you can do. So uh, show the flask message. Again, this is trying to show for everyone, meaning it's public, it's always there, or only for viewers who log in via GGID. Um, the email and password and this SSO, you won't really be using those because that the email and password is for uh, premium, where people can actually register as like a player profile, kind of like a customer manager, but they're just a player and they only have access to the lead views that they are members of or part of the lead. <clears throat> if you're really in depth with this and have your own websites with the Google Analytics. You have the ability to add that here, which allows you to track where, what people do on your website and have the ability to do some data crunching off of that. Uh, this ability, uh, internet search results. So I've never had good luck with it, but technically if you click here, you should be able to find this page by searching on Google or Bing. Um, I haven't really used it much, but it, that's what it's supposed to do. Uh, down here, we can actually reorder these tabs up here. So if we want social to be first, and then we'll put home at the back, and then analytics there. And then as you see, that shifted all that around. So very general settings just different things that you can do and set up. So let's start with T-Sheets. I want to show you how this looks. So we're going to edit our T-Sheet. Oh, actually, let's look at it first so you can try to get an idea. All right, so this is how it starts off. It allows people to select the round that we're looking at. Let's start a round one since this one I built already. We have the ability to go by tea time or by individual. Um, there's no time in here because I didn't actually set a tea time. I just set them up in pairings. So normally it would show the actual tea time, so you know. So by individual, it shows the individual person on the side sorted by first name. This can be changed to sorted by last name based off of your event profile and how you have names displayed. So if you go last name, comma, first name, it would show up that way instead of this. And it shows who we are playing with. And we have the ability to print it. And this would be something that everyone would have the ability to do. We can also filter out, filter for players, and spell my name right. And then, boom, I can just see if I have a huge lead with you know, 100, 200 people in it. We can sort through that a lot easier for people. All right, so we have some options to modify this page. can rename the title, the section that it goes in. So these sections up here, uh, home, analytics, t-sheets, results, social, those we can't actually get rid of or rename, but we can rename what's the pages that are in them. So if we wanted to call this something else, we do have that ability and we can even change what section it shows up in. Uh, splash page, what this means is that this page will be the first one that people go to when they log in. So right now the home page is, so this is a splash page right now. But if we go back to our T-sheet and click on splash page and save. Now if we go to our splash page, we see the T-sheet as the splash page. And you can set this with just about any page that you have available, uh, results, your social, whichever you want to have as the splash page you can. All right. And then these are just some other options available for T-sheets. Um, so this is going to show which round you want just selected first. They can always change it. Um, but So we'll just go to most recent round. You can also do it so they can change the option. 
for the round. Um, so if you don't want them to view their pairings for other rounds, you can just click this off and they would have to stay with most recent round. If you want to show their indexes, the blinds, course handicap, all that's available. Even if you had a custom field like affiliation, so if you're a club that is bringing people and having like multiple clubs go against each other for this lead, you could show who they're affiliated with. And default mode. So both these options will be available by tea time by individual. Just which one does it start with? And the group by tea time, if you scroll over this, it'll show us kind of what this means. And basically if it has that I. So this is more talking about when you have holes one and ten starts. And display specific courses only. Again, this is for big leads where you're playing on multiple different courses and you actually have specific ones you want to show. So let's take this off the splash page and save it. So back under T-Sheets, we also have these options over here. Edit page and edit section. Our new page and edit session, excuse me. Edit session, and we're actually going to be editing the T sheets. And so, I don't know why I said that, but so this allows you to edit this title here, these titles up here, as well as hide them if you want. So let's go to social real quick and edit this one. We have the ability to hide the section so this social aspect doesn't show up for anyone else. The other options for the section allow you to modify which option comes up first. So if you want event talk to be above photo stream, you can set that. But that's really all you have available for the edit section. doesn't allow you to change the look of individual sections over the general look. We also have the ability to add a new page. <clears throat> All right, so this is part of the area that Golf Genius is constantly kind of expanding and shifting around. As you can see, we have a lot of these that are premium version only, but if we do have a lot of options ourselves. They kind of put them into categories for you, and they're over here. So what these are are individual pages, just like what we were looking at by the T-Sheet. So a new page would be creating a new one of these under this T-Sheet tab. And they kind of help you sort them out so you know where they should probably go or where people would probably find them easier. As you can see, most of the ones that you can, or have access to, like Golfer Profile, Players, Calendar, T-Sheet, Round Robin Schedule, uh, most of these are kind of basic ones, but you do... Uh, it's one of the nice things about premium is you have a lot of different options for these and it makes this it can make these page uh, pretty outstanding uh, have season points so if, if you want to do a lead point system you can set that up team lead standing uh, since I don't have a lot of information in this lead right now not all this will be great but let's set up calendar so we just added calendar to our T-sheet section. And what we have the shows us here is the dates of the rounds. Um, this would be round name, acceptable signups. So you can see right now that these two have signups available, but the rest do not yet. And also we'll show everybody if a T-sheet's available or if results are available yet. And just like everything else, we do have the ability to edit the calendar. Now, what is available to edit varies quite a bit based on the page. As you saw with T-Sheet, we actually had some choices of what we wanted to show. Where here on the calendar, all we can make changes the title and whether or not the page is public or how it's viewed. So some things to remember about these pages is they're pretty set and standard. There's not a lot of changes you can make with them, so you just kind of have to go with the flow on a lot of it. Under results, let's look at how the tournament results show up. So again, uh, for the round one, is the only one that I have in there. So otherwise, it would give you the ability to do a drop down and pick which round you want to view. And then 
So this looks very, just about the exact same as the leaderboard. <clears throat> but as the leaderboard in the lead, this shows you exactly what is in. And if we had multiple tournaments, we would have multiples of these that we could do drop downs and showing how they won. Uh, we also have the ability to do uh, player event standings. So here it'll, actually, it'll show us a, a series, meaning that if we have a tournament that only lasted four of the days for the eight-day lead, we could have a series set up for just that or all rounds. And we can show not only how many times they played, average draw score, net, and lows. So really nice things to do. It gives people a lot of different options to view what... Hmm. Now, why this is down here, this looks like a little glitch. I uh, can't say exactly why it's showing the average net and gross all the way down here as well when it's right here. Hmm. That's odd. It looks like the coding got a little messed up there. So one of the other neat things is if I click on my name, it will show me all the rounds that I played with my information as well as where tournament that I was participating in for that round. Under analytics, though now this is a really neat thing if you have people that you know for leads like this that last a long time and people really want to track how they did and how they're playing, you know, this right here allows you to do a lot of that. So not only showing all that information, but if we click on an individual person we can now see even more things about them and how they've been doing. So individual rounds, uh, season totals for everything, summary, we do it in a pie chart, even compare it to the overall, the lead average, and we can even see whole by whole information for them. <clears throat> so really neat stuff, especially if you use this a lot and you have a, a lead that people did into this stuff, he really gives them that nice option to look at everything they're doing and really compare and see how they've grown or changed throughout the lead. And just like before, I kind of stepped over this stuff, but each of these pages has their own um, edit section to kind of show up what's available. So uh, for player event standing, you can actually determine which columns will show up and how everything's going to be filtered uh, so for player select above, we can include only points or include all points. <clears throat> have a few different options, but again, a lot of these are limited for the pages. Under analytics, again, we almost have none. So there's a lot of different things available, but not many, not many ways to actually edit pages. They kind of come with what they did. Uh, so let's start a new page real quick and show you some of these other analytical options. <clears throat> so we can actually even do a most improved player report. Oh, <laughs> I actually need some additional rounds to do that. But uh, we would, this would show, this would allow us to do an improved player report for the lead. So over the course of it, we could have some fun with that. Um, what else we want to? Oh, let's look at season points. Um, actually, this might not show much just because I don't have any season points set up. Yeah, um, but season points I'm actually going to be doing over next week uh, when we talked about the customer center and everything. But um, I just you do have the ability to show that in your elite event profile. And so the final thing I wanted to show you with the event profile, I know this is kind of a quicker webinar today. So for all the different personalization and pictures, the it's all, again, all set here, which we've done over before, personalize your lead. So for your loader, logo, banners, and backgrounds, photo galleries, and these sort of things are all right here. And this information is also what allows you to customize your event profile. Um, I did not talk about the social aspect. This is something that uh, you can set up. You gotta be a little careful with it. Um, so if you actually take photos 
Um, during your lead, you can upload them into that photo section under your event, your lead profile, and actually have out al uh, al albums available. So, and if you're a premium user, you can actually allow mobile uploads for people to take pictures out on the course and post up on here. Really allows people to get into the lead and see what's going on with everybody. Um, one thing that we have at Golf Genius has reminded us with this is you have to be careful with what people upload because sometimes, you know, bad things can be uploaded but without you knowing it and can get you in trouble. So just one of those things to look out for if you choose to do some of these. And the event talk is kind of like an open forum to allow people to talk back and forth on the website. Again, it's one of those things you have to be careful with because once you open it and allow it, people can kind of put whatever they want in there. So you really have to monitor it and make sure that everything is appropriate. But you do have that option depending on you know how much you guys want to do with your leads. So um, that was pretty much everything I wanted to cover. I know this is kind of a different subject we went over today, less focusing on the how to run the actual tournament and more of the look of it. Um, we hope to see you next week, which we're going to be covering the customer center. And for that, what we're just going to be going over is the customer center here. We'll be talking about this general look of it, what these options do in the different categories up top. Since we started talked about specifically the events and leads now, now we're going to go kind of the broader view of the system itself and give you an idea of some of the other things that you can do with Tournament Management Club. Well, have a good day, everybody. Thank you for joining us and hope to see you next week.